Good morning. Welcome to the Empower Series. My name is Clifton Johnson. We got a full house today. I hope you are ready to be empowered. Um, everybody show some love and energy. Good morning, everyone. So I want to thank all of you for being here, here in person as well as online. I know we've got people from Michigan, from Florida. Last month we had somebody from Kenya. So if you back online, we're going global, baby. So you're in the right spot to be empowered. Um, we got new faces. We've got people who've come back before. Uh, so I want to let you know that you're in the right place. We're going to talk about credit today. But what the Empower Series is, is truly a series. In January, we started with goal setting and doing a vision board workshop. Last month, we did um, a workshop on business and how do you take your idea and put it into action. Today, we're gonna to talk about credit and next month, we're gonna talk about financial literacy. So the point is, underneath the video on YouTube is a link to the presentation and will be links to other resources to help you take this goal that you may have for this year of maybe reducing your debt, getting out of debt, just educating yourself about credit, um, disputing any issues or errors on your credit report, whatever that is, you're gonna get valuable information about that today. I'm not gonna take a lot of time because there's a lot of content and I'm gonna really introduce you to the speaker so that he can continue to bless you. But I first wanna say nothing of significance can be done alone. You are critically a big part of the Empower Series as well as the volunteer team that puts this on. Comerica Bank have been with us since the very beginning. We're actually in their house, the Comerica Business HQ. This is a community-based co-working space that is available for the community. It doesn't take financial costs from you, but it does cost to put this on. And the way you pay for it is being successful and using the resource. So our speaker today is with Comerica Bank. He's gonna tell you a little bit more about himself as well as this space. I want you to stay tuned. If you're online, I was telling everybody here to tell somebody else, be a blessing. Don't keep this to yourself. So you're online right now. So stay connected with us on YouTube. All of our programs are there. You connect with us on our so other social media accounts. Our speaker is Trent Sampson. He's a vice president with Comerica Bank, been in the community for over 25 years. He's been at the Empower Series, but he's never spoke at the Empower Series. This is his first time. Um, he's gonna drop some serious knowledge when it comes to credit. He deals with this, he works with businesses all the time. He's a resource that you definitely wanna be connected with. So without any further ado, give Trent some love. Welcome, Trent. Very nice, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Happy Saturday to you guys. Hope everybody's doing well. Thank you guys for coming out. Uh, Empower, for me, it's we've been doing this for a number of years, so just for me to be a part of it, it's a privilege. But for and for me, Empower is like, you're, you know, you're sitting at the table and, you know, you got a, a just a menu of food. And so the menu there really for Empower is really give you that fuel, that energy to energize you, empower you to go out and be your very best. So for me to be a part of this, it's really a privilege. My name is Lloyd Trent Sampson. I'm a relationship manager here at Comerica. I've been over here about 25 years. I work with the commercial bank. I work with business owners and I help them with financing, uh, treasury, um, foreign exchange, just various things associated with commercial banking. So credit is really the foundation of what we do as far as our starting process. So this is a very important to topic, so we're going to walk through it. But before we walk through it, I'm going to give everybody just a quick moment. I'm originally from Louisiana, been here, started off in a credit training program, and now I'm on the lending floor. And as I said, I work with small and mid-sized businesses. But I want everyone, if you can, just give me maybe just a little 25-second um, who you are, what you do, a little 25-second commercial. We're going to use the speaking mic, so go on the back end. Okay. So starting here. Yes, sir. Uh, 25 <clears throat> seconds. Go. It's Stephen Shirley, and I'm originally from Oklahoma, been in Dallas 25 years. And uh, in the past, I helped uh, coordinate nonprofit, and we developed uh, along with, as I have given, Don William uh, Foundation of Empowerment, built a single living cell couple miles from here and now I do help churches uh, coordinate their activities. Very good. Thank you, Stephen. Hey, good morning. Um, my name is Ricardo Berry. I'm originally from New York. 
12 year Navy veteran. Um, once I got out of the service 2018, my wife and I, we had a commercial cleaning business. We had it for two years and um, I sold that business, went to the federal agency, did quite a few jobs. So now I'm just a full-time student at UNT Dallas, uh, majoring in um, hospitality management, and I'm just here to network. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Chastity Gray. I am a native of Dallas. Um, I'm currently working with a nonprofit that is called um, the Parenthood Awards and Scholarship Foundation. I am the vendor manager for Family Fest DFW, which is an event that we put on every year in the fall. Um, it's geared towards um, community and togetherness within our community. Um, we do do a concert series called Neo Soul Night Under the Stars, and it's a brilliant event. We have about um, 700 plus in attendance, and we have about 20 to 25 vendors, and I handle all the aspects of that. So that's what I've been doing for the last past four years. Thank you, Chastity. Hello, my name is Twala Sauls. I am with um, Ladies and Film and Television Dallas. Um, we are currently preparing for our 2024 Texas Indie Filmmaker Award Show, which is which will be held March 29th through the 30th um, in Arlington at the Sheraton by the Dallas Cowboys. Um, I'm originally from North Carolina, and I have dual degrees in English and theater. Good morning. I'm Hope Watson. I'm from Jersey City, New Jersey. I'm here in Dallas, as you can tell, and I am in education. I was in IT for over 30 years, and I am just looking for opportunities of networking. Thank you, Hope. My name is Al McClaney. I'm originally from Alabama, been in Dallas since probably 1996. I worked for MetLife in the Human Resources group uh, but I have a passion for stewardship which is what I do at my church St. John Baptist Church um, and one of the things uh, Clifton had mentioned to the group is I have a podcast you can just do a search on YouTube uh, under Al McClaney and each week in fact as soon as we get through with this I'll be going to do uh, the YouTube video um, and it is a biblically based when it comes to finances thank you Al Good morning. My name is Juanita Pounds, and I'm originally from Arkansas. But when I was working in the corporate, I left there about four years ago. I've just moved around everywhere, Chicago, St. Louis, uh, you name it, Oklahoma, Illinois, Chicago is Illinois. But that uh, led me to Dallas about 18 years. And then I, four years ago, I decided you know, I don't want to do this corporate rat race anymore. But I do love uh, educating people, especially in the communities that who like the education. So I teach generational uh, wealth building to help close that financial literacy gap that exists in our communities that I believe, and we work on the premise that these things should have been taught in school, they, but they were not. My degree literally is in, I took finance and uh, uh, advanced accounting, but I never learned anything about generational wealth building. And I think that's a huge problem in our communities that we should strive to help educate. And because we're gonna have to leave that legacy and pass it on to the next generation. So that's what we should strive for. Thank I don't want two minutes. Twenty-five seconds. Twenty-five seconds. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jim Austin with the Austin Company Commercial Real Estate. I have an online presence through Jim Austin Online. It's been around twenty years and been doing commercial real estate for forty-three years, but a networker. So I came over to see my friend uh, Cliff Johnson because this is a great series of connecting people of color and opportunity to network and give good information. So came over from Fort Worth, flipped the coin, do I stay home and watch it online or I come over and do some networking? Um, I am launching my new podcast with a young lady named Terry Lee. It's called North Texas Talks and uh, dot live and we will be launching that in uh, April. So. Look out for it. North Texas Talks with Jim Austin and Terry Lee. 
Good morning, everyone. I'm Sherry Wood Cooper. I um, am from Birmingham, Alabama. So go Alabama over there. I've been in Texas for um, a bit over 25 years now. Um, but I work with UT Southwestern Medical Center and a retired military, retired Army. And I have been a longtime supporter and advocate for Empower Series. So happy to meet everyone. Good morning. My name is Tandy Carraway, and I run a company called College Mode Academy. I help students go to school without debt, without student loans. Um, so, yeah, it's my favorite thing to do and talk about. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Audrey Whitaker, and I work for the Dallas County District Attorney's Office. I've been in Dallas for about 10 years, but I'm originally from Florida, Honduras. So, um, and I'm here just to network, and I also have a desire to learn about finances and teach that to women of color. Good morning. My name is Denise Stanford. I am the owner of Business Alliance Center, and I work with small business owners to help them create alliances to put themselves in the center of success. And so essentially what I do is I love to go out and bring them forward. So I do live promotions and interviews, and I don't charge them anything. So that can bring them forward and they can share their journey, you know, as they go through building their business. Hi, my name is Jason Stanford. I'm the other half of this uh, situation here. Um, but I'm a serial entrepreneur. So um, I'm an owner of the Attaché Cigar Lounge. Uh, we are rebuilding right now. Should be open by the end of the summer. But I'm a serial entrepreneur. So I've done a lot of things um, and learned a lot. And, and the best lessons are bought lessons. And I got the receipts. So uh, you know, that's just what it is. And I'm, I'm not stingy with information. Um, if anybody asks me anything, if, if there's a mistake that I made, I will tell you the unfettered truth, um, what mistakes I made, what problems, and, and hopefully so you don't have to make those same stumbles or whatever the case. So, um, you know, I'm here. Good morning. I'm Deborah, and I'm also with UT Southwestern. So I'm here this morning to gain uh, additional knowledge um, about finance, credit, because, you know, as it has been said, it's legacy, leaving legacy. And Edward H Jose are behind the cameras. They are with AE Media Group. They make us look good on social media. <laughs> they do a lot. They give us around almost $200,000 worth of um, media services and rental of their spaces, doing the podcast and everything. And the values is just so much so little compared to what they do in our partnership. So they're here for that. My name is Clifton Johnson. I'm from Los Angeles in Dallas by way of Seattle. And I am the steward of the idea of the Empower Series, which is much bigger than what it is today. And my goal is to leave this, this idea in a much greater place for who I pass it on to, to make it grow even further. So. Well, again, thank you guys. Um, we have a very, very, um, just a wide spectrum of people from uh, New York, uh, Chicago, Alabama, Fort Worth, Los Angeles, Seattle. So, and this is a very, very important topic. Really just want to walk through it. And as we walk through it, uh, hope to add a lot of value. And we can also, um, we'll go at your pace and do a little Q&A. Uh, the topic today, of course, is credit reports, credit scores, barring basics. And as I said, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into all of these. Uh, for me, as I said earlier, it's a foundation of commercial lending credit. It allows you, you know, that flexibility. Hey, I want to buy this house. I want to buy a car. I want to go to school. I need something to help me with maybe a long-term financing venture so that I can borrow now and maybe repay over a term or over time because it's very expensive to buy a house and just pay for it in cash, very expensive to buy a car, pay for it in cash. And we know the cost, with the cost of living, how school has increased over the years. And so we'll walk through the foundation of this, what gets you a start in the door, um, credit reports, credit score, and borrowing basics to top. Uh, session overview, explore the importance of credit scores and reports, learn how to access information about your credit score and report, Discuss strategies to build and improve your credit. 
learn what it means to borrow from a lender's perspective. My favorite part, so we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, your credit history can affect your access to credit. Your credit history can affect your access to credit, loans, jobs, housing, insurance, and other important services. How well you repay your credit history tells a story. Understanding your right helps you know how to protect your credit history. Credit reports. What is a credit report? A credit report is really just a snapshot. It's a snapshot of your history of repaying, and it may look at that over, if you pull up your credit report, it's going to show maybe a 24-month period, whether you're current, past due, late, delinquent, etc. cetera. Uh, the credit report from a lender's perspective, it'll help the lender understand how credit worthy you are. Most of you guys know this. So, um, and if they give you a loan, how likely are that you're going to repay it? Um, the agencies that uh, everybody typically use are these three right here, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. A credit report contains the following information. Um, public records, lawsuits, bankruptcy, arrest, conviction, delinquent or unpaid taxes, personal information. It's always important to make sure that this information is accurate as well to your personal information so that it's a reflection of you. Uh, we all know how many John Smiths there are. Social Security number, address, name of spouse, employer. Uh, credit accounts, debt status, open and close account, credit inqu inquiries, organizations, people, agencies that have requested information to verify your credit in the past two years. Questions, comments? Why two years? Uh, two years is probably just the last. Um, it's a look back of the last couple years of how you've paid your obligors, and it'll kind of give us a how you pay people in the past is an indication of how you're going to pay in the future. And from a banking standpoint, we you know from a commercial side, I may look at the last three years. But just feel like that's enough time to gauge if you're going to do good or not. Yes, yes. It, it's part of the process, but not all ending. Yes? The difference in if you own the business. And I, I used to, a former president, not, not criticize him, but I idea of people saying he did make no deal. And we owe three hundred and eighty three million dollars personal and <laughs> different how you they do. So um when you're asking a question, you don't have the mic. So can you repeat the question for the people who are listening online? If I'm I'm gonna let you get can you you have to um how you differentiate hold on, you need this to make sure people can hear you. How you differentiate that personal and business? Well, well, we'll go a little bit deeper into that, but really from, we're always going to look at what's the source of repayment. So you're going to start there. What's the source of repayment? Is a resource personal? Is a source a resource of the business? So if it's the business, we're, I'm going to look at the last three years. If it's personal, I'm going to look at maybe the last two years, tax returns, um, and your uh, W-2s. So you're always going to start what is the source, and then that's where we'll, start diving a little bit deeper. Any other questions? Your report, everybody should do this. You're entitled to a free annual report, so this is how you can access and get your uh, free annual report. And just make sure that the information is correct, it's accurate, it's a good reflection of how you repay, how you pay people. So yesterday, I tried to get my reports. So I saw that um, one did show me my credit score, <coughs> and another guy told me my credit score. And he said, credit score is not free. 
That is correct. Some of them may charge you. They may give you a generic report, and for you to get a little bit detailed report, a little bit more, they may charge you a fee for that. Uh, the question was, uh, do we know what's the fee if you want additional information? I do not know. It may vary from institutional. Some of them may want you just to sign up for the services, and some of them you may be able to pay a one-time fee. So it may vary from each, from TransUnion, Equifax, or Experian. Okay, and what I did notice also is that it, they had different scores. So what, why the difference in the scores? Uh, I, I'm not sure about that as far as the different scores, but we're going to talk about the scores a little oh, bit later on. But most of the scores are kind of consistent. So what I want to say is that this website, the annual the annualcreditreport.com, it was a website where you can get a free credit report from the three agencies with no cost. It does not include your credit score, and it is free. But now since COVID, they are allowing you to get one free credit report every week. So if you go to this website, you'll see that you can get it weekly. So it's kind of a misnomer. Even though it says annual credit report, you can actually get your credit report now weekly with no cost from these three agencies. Now, again, this is only your credit report. It's not your credit score. And your, each one of these agencies have their own algorithm to create a, a, a score. Uh, Trent's going to tell you from a lender's perspective that uh, each lender has their own criteria. And so this score that you may be seeing online um, there's a number of different scores out there that are marketing, and you do have to pay for it. Sometimes, if you have a credit card, if you have a credit card, there's a link that will let you go and see a score that they use. And I would just say, just don't be so mindful of the score. It's an indication of, you know, do you have bad things on your credit, or do you have good things on your credit? Trent's going to tell you more about what those factors are, but um, but yeah, I just want to let you know that this gives you your report only. It does not give you scores. There are scores out there, there's multiple of them, but those are all different marketing um, methods just to give you an idea of where you are with good and bad things on your credit report. Okay, credit score. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> A side note to that, sometimes when you access some of the free, I'm not saying that one in particular, but some of the free credit report uh, offerings that are online, Make sure you read the fine print of their of their agreements, because some of their agreements will ultimately tell you that they are a collection agency. OK, so if you go on there and you put your information on there, ultimately, those those people are not credit grantors, nor are they really consumer reporting agencies. They are collection agencies. Make sure you read the fine print. This is the only legitimate free credit reporting website, annualcreditreport.com. Go ahead, Trent. Okay, so just want to make sure everybody, you know, you got the, the link here, uh, the annual credit report. And again, that's it's up to you guys to verify, to make sure the information is right. As he talked about, look at the fine print, make sure your name is correct, social security, all the details, you know, that's incumbent on you to verify your information. Because, you know, that's a source that lenders will use primarily. Credit scores. Uh, what is a credit score? It's a unique number based on information in all credit reports. Predicts the payment of bills and debts as agreed. People with higher credit scores are likely to present lower risk to creditors. What does that mean? Well, that means you get to borrow at a cheaper interest rate, and that's really, really the foundation of financial literacy, the foundation of really of um, you know bettering yourself, uh, access to wealth. It affects the cost. It affects the cost. Yes, it affects your pocketbook. Yes. Um, credit score range. Credit score is a three-digit. Tells the lender how likely you are to repay. This right here is the cutoff, typically with lenders, 670 and above. And uh, it's, sometimes it just takes time as well, too, to build up your credit, your credit history. So I remember when I was you know, coming out of college, I was like right here, then I moved here, then I eventually moved on. You know, you kind of just gravitate through the process over time as you develop some type of repayment history. And that's primarily, you know, with your house, your car, student loans, the agencies that really do all the reporting.
credit cards as well too. So for that, you said you think six seventy is the cutoff? Yes, about six seventy. And I'll imagine there's some math behind that that you all in the industry have looked at from a a standpoint of lending and those people below that are high risk? I think all lenders have a cutoff point, right. but most of them start right here. And generally, if you're behind right here, this area, it's an indication that you do not repay your debts accordingly to the terms that you agreed upon. When you start hovering around that 670, is that also uh, organizations may ask for a co-signer? They may, and some of them may ask for a cosigner regardless, depending on how, how strong their re uh, repayment ability is. And we're going to talk about that a okay. little bit later on as well, too. Yes? Also, when it comes to credit scores, it depends on the actual organization or company because there are some who take into consideration how COVID affected many people's credit, so they're not just basing that on your credit score. That is correct. Your credit score, like I say, it's an indication, but it's not an all means. And we're going to talk about that when, uh, a little bit deeper when we get into the five C's of credit. Five factors of a general FI, uh, FICO method. I'm going to be honest with you guys. They use an algorithm that's very, very complicated. They use a weighted average. And sometimes it's kind of really, really hard to figure out how do they determine your credit score. So that's why it's very important for you to get the, the annual report, to look at your history. If you have closed accounts and you're not using them, make sure that they are accurate. Make sure the information is correct because this algorithm is very, sometimes it's just very difficult for you to understand. You can see, your, you can see how they weighted. it. 65% is your history and how much you own that. Exactly, right. <laughs> So this, you know, the leverage here that they're looking at is the amounts owed and the repayment history. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? Yes, Jim? My question is, um, they tell you not to close your account. My question is, if you pay a credit card off and just keep the card, you don't have a running balance. Mm -hmm. Good or bad as far as rating your credit? I think sometimes it may be bad because I like to close out everything. Uh, but sometimes they like to see that you do have access to credit and that you, even, even though you don't owe anything, but you do have access to it. And so that may factor in it as well, too, with this credit, his, credit mix, uh, payment history and the amount that you owe because you're not going to owe anything there. I would like to add to that. So, so your answer is accurate because from a personal standpoint, if you don't like to have a lot of credit, it may not be good to have it open. But to your point, Trent, there's an algorithm that's used. And one of the factors is how much credit do you have and how much do you use of the credit that you have? So when you have a credit card that you're not using and you have history, um, you got to be careful if you close that, that shortens your history and it also reduces the amount of credit you have and your utilization may be negatively impacted. So, so when you, what you should actually do, this is informational and educational. From this, one of the actions I would encourage you all to do is number one, get a copy of all three of your credit reports because there are things reported to one agency that's not reported on another one. So you should go to annualcreditreport.com, one of the action steps, you can write this down, go to annualcreditreport.com and get a copy of each one of your credit reports from the three agencies and see what's on it. Secondly, there are a lot of nonprofit organizations like Money Management International, the National Foundation for Credit Counseling, that will set you up with a free consultation with a certified credit counselor. That's where you can get your credit report in front of you talk to them and ask them specific questions about your individual report and whether it's good, bad, and what you should do from it. So definitely do those two things as a result of this and, and realize that this is an educational process. This is not anything that's giving you direct personal advice about your own personal credit. So Money Management International is, is the largest nonprofit um, financial consulting or financial educational work. Uh, a company in the United States. 
They're going to be the presenter next month, but it's moneymanagement.org is their website. Moneymanagement.org, and that's for Money Management International. The next website is, um, is nfcc.org. And that stands for National Foundation for Credit Counseling. And those are two nonprofit organizations that provide um, credit counseling, a bunch of financial literacy organization uh, education. So definitely look at those two organizations and give them a call and get some specific advice about your own credit reports. And yeah. those two are free? Yeah, they provide free consultation. Free now, they do provide additional services. So if you have a situation where if you look at all of your monthly payments and you don't have enough to make your payments, <laughs> Uh, some people look at trying to get a consolidation loan. I would really hesitate um, recommending that you do that without calling them. They have programs that will allow you to consolidate. Uh, they would help you make a payment, and they would allocate those payments to all of your creditors. And they have relationships with them that can reduce your interest rate, reduce your late fee charges to help you make further gains in getting out of debt. So they have services that they do offer and they do charge for, but for basic consultation to get a better understanding of your situation, helping you budget, they're not going to charge you for that. So Money Management International, moneymanagement.org, um, nfcc.org stands for National Foundation for Credit Counseling, and I encourage you to look at those two organizations. And for the live chat, I want to put those links in the in the chats. Okay. Money, Money Management International, you can get on their uh, like email list, and they send great articles. Like, and, and it's not like every week you're getting stuff, but they, like they'll send budgeting articles. I love their articles. Yeah, so so what Al just said is that if you go to their website and get on their newsletter, yep. you'll continue to get free information from them to educate you and empower you. So thank you, Trent. So another, um, just to go back a little bit as well too, sometimes your credit card as well too will provide you, you know, you can go online and you can look and you can see your uh, your credit score from month to month and that may give you the last six months of it. So you just want to verify that the information is correct. Okay. As Clifton also indicated, the three agencies, you want to look at Requ request a report from all three just to verify and again information is going to vary from each one of them but you what you're really looking for is just the validity um, validate that all of the information is correct and it's a good representation of you and how you repay uh, strategies for credit um, pay your bills on time as agreed continue to pay down your your debt balances keep a portion of your credits you use compared with credit limits. We talked about that. Your utilization. Don't apply for too much credit at the same time. You don't want to get over leveraged. Um, avoid transaction interactions, inactions that may create new entries. Uh, pay your taxes, child support in full on time. And again, regularly check dispute errors. Keep good financial records. Questions? Are you? Is that that thirty percent utilization carving out like home, mortgage, and auto, or is that everything? That utilization may be um, maybe lines of credit, Line credit, of credit, credit, yeah, credit cards, but your no limits. Mortgage. No. Okay. Yes. Yes. How long, if you have a credit card that you're not using, like you're saying, don't close it. How long does it stay on your credit report as open, or will they eventually just close your line of credit? you got to keep in mind that your credit report is going to show probably the last 24 months, so it's going to be on there. And it's going to also going to have the dates on there as well, too. So it's going to be a reflection how long you had it. So it's going to be the last 24 months is going to show how current you are. And then at the top part of that, it's going to have information when that credit was open, established. So it's going to be some details there. So, so they can, just, just keep it open until you close it? Mm -hmm. oh. Yes. Yes. Yes, oh, the word bankruptcy has always been a negative and especially in the uh, black community, but it has been <clears throat> a protection a lot of people have used it as a protection because I know and I'm sure you know people who um, have debt 
and then they went through a bankruptcy, solid, and came out, and their credit score is better than what that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm talking about you bankruptcy, not bankruptcy, not of debt, but it is not a system of the youth. That's a tough question for me, uh, dealing with bankruptcies, because um, as a commercial lender, okay, um, have a fiduciary responsibility to protect the assets of the bank. And so really, we're going to make two decisions. One, we're going to loan money to people that can repay. And number two, we're not going to loan money to people that we deem cannot repay. So I don't, for me on my side, on the commercial side, if you're, if there's a bankruptcy last three or four years, it's going to be very difficult for me to even start an application for you because that tells me that you haven't repaid. And as we talked about, was to say your last two years, your last three years, looking at the trends, how you performed in the past is an indication of how you're going to perform in the future. Questions? Sherry? So I have a question. Um, <clears throat> Let's say I have a line of credit, and I've been I've I've heard that if you have an open line of credit, but you do not use it within, let's say a two year window or a certain amount of time, sometimes creditors will close the account yes. automatically. Yeah. Does that reflect the same <coughs> as you closing the account? Because it's a closed account. So is that the same effect on your credit? Do you know? I don't know how it impacts the personal credit, but lines of credit, you got to keep in mind, if you have a line of credit, the line of credit really, what lenders like to see, is it revolve. It needs to go up and down. Yes, it should not be evergreen. If it's evergreen, that's an indication that you're only paying what you're required to pay, and sometimes that's only interest only. So with a line of credit, credit card, bank line of credit, whatever it's for, it needs to revolve. And you've got to also keep in mind, if you revolve it, it's cheaper for you as well, too, because you save the interest expense. Because keep in mind, you're paying the interest expense on the outstanding principal balance. And if you reduce that, that reduces your uh, the, the amount that you pay. Yeah, that's just for a credit card. They'll email you and say, hey, you haven't used your credit card in a year or so. Mm -hmm. and, and they'll, threat, they'll threaten to close it. Well, and start out put some gas. Your line of yeah, they'll and increase they'll your line. Yeah. They'll decrease it and then they'll, they'll close it. Yep. Um, so, and Usually they'll, they'll let you know they're about to do it. Yeah, but it's it's important really yeah. to revolve it yeah. for just uh, again, yes. If, if you revolve it, it's better for you, and it's a good reflection of you as well too, because you're keeping it current and you're paying it down. I I prefer to be on cash cards, like a revolving thing. You take your gas card, mm -hmm. and you just get your cash, you pay it off, and it helps increase your credit score. Real. For me, I, I prefer the ones you get the airline mileage because I get a benefit for it. And so, I like the cash back. Yes. And yeah, some like the cash back. But you got to keep in mind. Well, I'll tell you this. So, Clifton. So, I'll tell you this. Number one, this is great information. And I'm going to do a podcast on the origin of consumer credit and cons oh, consumer debt. Because I think it's very it's very beneficial for you to understand how it originated and how initially when it came to borrowing money, it wasn't really for consumers. It was usually f it was first for businesses mm -hmm. because they were they were doing a business activity that was going to increase the value of the services or the or the products that they were selling. And banks were willing to lend them money so that they can do business. But that being said, I want to make sure that we get this because a lot of times our attention is on credit scores. And I would just like to say that the credit score is the end of it. Is it, it is a reflection of what behaviors you've done in paying back bills that you've agreed to pay back. So, so the objective, in my opinion, is not to focus so much on the credit scores, but to focus on the behaviors of sound money management. And sound money management means, number one, having an intention of how you're going to spend your money. So that's budgeting. Be mindful around that, not over leveraging yourself, not spending more than you have 
so that you're not getting yourself in a situation where you're using too much credit and you're not able to pay it back as agreed upon. So Trent's going to go, go through some strategies on how to, you know, maintain good credit. And if you've made some missteps, how to repair that or maybe fix errors. But I want to make sure that you have the mindset that the objective is not just get a high credit score by any means necessary is to practice sound money management behaviors to move forward towards your goals. And if you do that, then the end result will be a good credit score. So let's not get it twisted. For me, the key is really, as we talked about, Clifton kind of hit on this a little bit, be sure you can afford the payments before getting a loan. Live within your means, understanding your own personal financial budget. You don't want to over leverage yourself um, because that's how one of the key factors that can just lead over leverage can lead to bad credit because you cannot pay within the terms that you agreed upon. And you got to keep that in mind. You borrow money, but you agree to pay it back on certain terms. If you do not, that affects your credit. Potential credit errors, um, identify errors, incorrect reporting of account status, data management errors, balance errors outdated information. Again, that's incumbent on you to verify, as we said, get the reports, verify the information, how to dispute online by mail. I used to call as well too. Sometimes it's kind of hard to reach someone. It's very hard to get in contact with them, go through the call centers and whatnot. But it, it's again, it's up to you to verify the information, follow the procedures. Everybody has their own procedures that they have to follow. So just keep that in mind. What to include, um, name and address, clear description, uh, a request for correct information or removal, supporting documents. It's time consuming, let's be honest. But again, it's up to you to verify the information, especially with common names as well too. What happens next, uh, credit reporting agency will send you a letter, email, um, information, incorrect information cannot be put back. Check to make sure you can request in notices of corrections to be sent to individuals or businesses that will receive your report. Uh, strategies to repair and rebuild credit, um, secure credit card, debit card, uh, Consider credit building loan, becoming an authorized user. I do this with my kids. I have them on my credit um, on my credit cards just so they can have access to credit and also just start building up their own personal credit. Uh, Cosigner, uh, applying for a credit card at a store or gas station, and uh, consider making a large down payment, negotiate a loan for the balance. So there are some strategies and uh, those various agencies will also help you improve your situation as well too. Yes, Jim? You know, I meet a lot of people that say that they build your credit and um, I guess basically they're writing letters. Do you recommend? Sometimes you may have to use those, the Better Bureau, uh, other agencies, Clifton. I think you had a list of agencies that can help you, but you got to keep in mind there is a fee for that as well, too, and they may help you negotiate some repayment terms, um, just help you get a, a strategy, an action plan to say how you're going to repay them. Some of those do help. Uh, Clifton, you have anything else on that? Yeah, so th there are several agencies out there. The, the ones that I'm going to recommend are national organizations that have local affiliate, affiliated chapters and they're part of the National Foundation for Credit Counseling Certification, right? So the two that I recommend, again, is Money Management International and the National Foundation for Credit Counseling. They provide services, but what they're going to do, they're not going to do things for you. So they're not going to write your dispute letters. They're going to empower you and they may have a, a, a standard format if you find things that are incorrect on your credit report and you want to correct them, they will guide you and give you the resources and the tools you need to dispute them on the phone, online, or through the mail, right? But they're going to empower you. They're not going to do it for you. Now, there are other companies out there that are for-profit companies. They will provide um, credit co consolidation loans. 
They will uh, give you advice and maybe even say that they're going to write the letters for you. And they'll do that at a fee. They'll charge you for it. Um, I would say be very careful because not all of those companies are credible. Um, there are some companies that will do the services for you, but it's just like, you know, if you're not going to do it yourself and you want to pay somebody to do it for you, I would say be very careful and look for those companies. But you got to realize they're for-profit companies. And if you're having a hard time because you've over leveraged yourself and you're now spending money to try to fix that, you might be going in the wrong direction. That's why I'm recommending the two that I recommended. Are you uh, to everybody or just me? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no wait. So, anybody feel like I'm talking to you? I got a feeling. I get a feeling. Somebody, somebody's in the room. Somebody's in the room. So, 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 so then the other thing I would tell you is, um, uh, yeah, I mean, you just made me lose my train of thought, bro. That's good. I'm sorry. But, but I would say stay connected with the Empower Series. If you, if you email thrive at empowerseries.com, that's me, that's, con that's confidential. I can, get, I can get you connected to the resources that you're looking for or maybe answer a more specific question that you don't want to ask in the general public. But, um, but it's important that here, I want to make sure that you're getting the hope to see that there is light at the end of the tunnel. No matter what your financial situation is, you can get out of it. Uh, number two, I want to inspire you to take action. So really take some action as a result of being here. Uh, Trent is educating you with some information that you don't have. So you all have a, a hard copy of this presentation. There's a link on the very bottom in, of the video for you to have, along with other links and resources. And then more importantly, connecting you to resources. So definitely, if you're in a position, you're a business owner, and you really, you really want to look for capital and see if, if, you're, if you're in the right position for it, Trent will provide you with his information so that he can consult you on a one-on-one -on -one basis, given his job, um, connect with me, or connect with the other organizations that I'm sharing with you. OK, it is. OK, I'm going to go back here just to your credit score. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. I have a question. So is credit, consul con oh, thank you. Is credit cons <laughs> consolidation a bad thing? No, it's when, not. No, it's not. It's an effort just to repair your situation. And so it just, sometimes it just takes time. So I think, um, you know, but what you, you want to avoid is collections and charge-offs because that's a negative, and bankruptcies as well, too, because that drives your credit score down because that, as a, that's an indication that you're not going to repay. So for me, when I look at credit, it's always important for me what credit is. Credit is really good fate. As I said, it allows you flexibility to borrow, and what you do, you agree to repay. But if you don't repay, you kind of know that you, you know, everybody kind of knows their individual situation. Hey, I know I didn't make my mortgage payment. So really, bad credit, it just doesn't happen overnight. It happens over time. You know, there's a history there. You know, not revolving your line of credit, keeping it high, keeping it evergreen, kind of leads to driving your credit score to a lower credit score. So you've got to be cognizant of that. And there's Skipping a, there's, payments. Or, you know, there's sometimes you may have to work out or do something. We all may have a hardship. Hey, I can't make this payment. I need to talk to my lender. I need to work out some terms. And that ha did happen a lot during COVID yeah. because a lot of people got some moratoriums and saying, hey, you know what? I'm not working. I need to make a deferral. So there are situations where there are hardships and where you can work that out. And they will agree to not report as well, too. But again, that is up to you to communicate that. It's up to you to keep track of that, to document it, and make sure that your, ac your records are accurate. Yes, question? And Ricardo, so the, ans the, the answer to your question about whether consolidation loans are good or bad is that it depends, it depends on your situation. You know, there's pros and cons to it, and I think what's really important if you are considering that is that you get consultation from someone who can look at your situation and then properly inform you of the pros and cons. So if you need to get access to that, I'll connect you after this workshop. Yeah, what yes. about what about um what about medical expenses on credit reports? Because in the past, I don't know, yeah. What about medical expenses? <laughs> uh, anybody have anything on that? Or medical? What? Yeah. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so here's what I would tell you. So so um there have been some laws passed recently. Yes, yes. That, recently. That makes it um less detrimental to report your delinquency on medical bills. So again, this is um this is informational. If you have a situation where you have some delinquency with medical bills, this is where I'm going to sound like a broken record. You really need to talk to a certified um, credit counselor who's up to date on the current laws. They will give you free consultation on that based on your specific situation as opposed to getting a general answer that may not be appropriate for everybody. So Money Management International, National Foundation for Credit Counseling, their 24-hour line, their national organizations, I would say follow up with them. If you need to get in touch with me before you reach them, my email address is thrive at empowerseries.com. Yes, I would encourage you. There has been some recent legislation on that regarding that. I would just read up on it. You can go to online and Google it and read up on it. But I'd also get some uh, expert guidance on it because I think now there are certain ways of how they do report it now. But again, my answer is just very, very general. Mm -hmm. And you may want to speak to an expert that can give you some more precise information. Yes? Would that, would that help um, what you're asking? Once you pay the bill, and, and, and I've gone through it by now, you have to pay the bill, and then they will have to, because of the legislation, they will then they can write the letter or whatever, and they take it off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is information also for everyone to know. Um, <clears throat> if you ever find yourself in a situation where you have medical expenses and you have a invoice that you cannot pay with a medical hospital or whatever all hospitals have mm, i don't know if it comes out of their foundation department yeah. they have money yep. mm -hmm. where they can help you with those expenses if you call and report that you're having a hardship in paying medical expenses they will do everything that they can to help you there are people who may have a eight ten thousand dollar invoice for some medical <coughs> expenses that can be taken care of by the hospital so it will not report to your credit just FYI. i got to repeat that for the people online yes. so yes. so sherry works as a um, volunteer coordinator for one of the major hospitals in dallas texas pardon me manager, manager i'm sorry <laughs> 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 she's about to be a director she's the manager of the department right <laughs> but what she is saying what she is saying is that contact your the hospital because they have resources and funds that are available to assist you when it comes to paying for bills that are beyond your means to pay for um, but again it goes back to specific information related to you uh, this is not the place to get direction for that you should really be contacting a professional in that area to get up-to-date legal um, information that's staying up on top of things that are tailored for your specific needs. Um, the other thing, if you're in corporate America, check with your human resources department because like at MetLife, we have a foundation. We also have some people in our HR that can negotiate with the, you know, different corporations are different. Uh, also, um, underserved your employee assistance program. A lot of people don't go to that. There's a lot of funds there, right, in corporations, if you're in corporate America. So, so what Al is saying now is that if you work for a corporation and you have an employee assistance program, you should utilize that because that is specifically designed for people who need assistance in either financial assistance, medical assistance, mental assistance, or whatever, without you actually having to pay for initially getting started. So definitely check with your HR department and there's a ton of other resources out there. Yep. I think that's the key word, it's just resources. Utilize your resources, um, do some research and again, find something that's really specific for you. Get some expert guidance, something that can help you tailor to your, you know, work to get you to your solution that you need. Yes? Yes. Uh, no bankruptcy questions. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. 
you about his actions? What can you say? Sorry. Yeah, well, you, they would probably tell, they would look at your credit score. <laughs> no, they wouldn't say no. They would look at your credit score and look at your tax returns. And again, uh, they would look at the behavior of how well you repaid in the past. And so if you meet the metrics, a lot of them for some of the smaller loans, maybe loans less than $10,000, they may want a, a certain credit score, a certain income. And so they may be looking at three or four different metrics to decide if how much they're going to loan you. So, and again, it all comes back down to your credit, the ability to borrow money, money you owe a personal, but really how well you repay. And, you know, and we're going to charge you an interest on that as well, too. But the bank itself cannot loan more money and more assets than they have because y'all went for a federal reserve bank or y'all had trustees that y'all accountable. Yeah, we're accountable, yes. And now you got to keep in mind from a banking standpoint, we loan, you deposit money into the bank, we leverage those deposits to make loans. Our deposits are our liabilities, our loans are our assets. And so we have to make good decisions on that because if we make an error, that means that we're not going to be able to pay our depositors back with their you know, money to deposit in the bank. So we, I have a fiduciary <coughs> responsibility to be responsible and make sure that we manage that money accordingly. And, and then to also answer your question, so if you go to a major bank like Comerica Bank or some of the other major banks out there and you know you have bad credit, you may not be able to get a loan because they got to do their fiduciary responsibility and not loan money to people that have a, a known history of not paying back money as agreed upon. But there's other resources out there. There are community development financial institutions. So community development financial institutions are nonprofit organizations that are more mission driven and they're lenders and they focus on low income communities. So they realize that the credit score may be lower than what a normal bank will, will loan to. And they, they, they work with banks like Comerica Bank to provide loans to people who are re recovering from some bad experiences. But you know, you gotta go through a different method Instead of just going straight into a bank with no relationships and applying using your credit score, it's not going to work, bro. Right. Um, so number one, I would say look for community development financial institutions. They partner with national banks. And then also, if you're in a business, um, what I would ask you, if you know that you have bad credit, you've got to look at some non-traditional ways of getting loans. And there are some ways you can set that up with your LOCs to provide other equity owner owners um, part of your business venture, but you've got to have a profitable business venture. You know, right? You can't be borrowing money and it's a hope that you're going to make money, <laughs> right? So, so there's some other ways. So if you really have a question, if you want to talk about that, get with me afterwards and I'll connect you to some other resources, but it's not hopeless if you have bad credit. You just got to go through a different means and go through different agencies and not walk into a Comerica bank with no relationships and think that just your credit report um, can get you a new loan. It, it's not. And your credit score is not going to get you a loan. It's really based on can you repay it? And so when I'm out teaching financial lit literacy, I want to teach you how live within your means on a budget, not getting too leveraged and that you can show the ability to repay. So what does that mean? That means that you're probably going to borrow at a low interest rate, whereas when you go to some secondary other lender, third party, whatnot, your interest rate is going to be a little bit higher because they're going to deem you a little bit more financial risk. Land is collateral, that's fine, but collateral doesn't repay the debt. You have to have the cash flow associated with it and making sure that you're generating income to repay it. That's the second part of the five C's of credit Repeat that, that. We're talk Repeat about. what you just said. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. Yeah, that's important to understand that you need cash to pay back a debt. Yeah. So collateralizing a debt is doesn't, you got to have cash to pay it back because they don't want your land. They don't want your car. Yeah. They don't want your house. No. They want money, <laughs> right? <laughs> On the commercial side right here, this is the basic. This is the basic of, fi of financial 
financial lending, commercial lending right here, the five C's of credit. This is what I do on a daily basis. Here. This is my favorite part right here. Character, capacity, capital, collateral, conditions. This is from uh, Forbes right here. There's one of them I want to take out, and it's the most important. And I'm going to take out, uh, I'm going to take out capital, and I'm going to replace it with cash flow. When you walk in the door, that's what I want to know first. Can you repay me? I'm looking at your last, not your two years, I'm looking at your last three years. Because I'm looking at that trend, and that trend is going to tell me how you performed in the past is how you're going to perform in the future, and especially on the commercial side. Yes? Kind of trick. Let me say this to you. Think about this. A lot of, and we all have phones. We all got cell phones. And you see on these social media apps, all these people that tell you, if you, want, if you get an LLC, you can walk into places with no documentation and all this kind of stuff and get a loan. That is clickbait garbage. Okay. It's it is information to get your information. That's all it is because I'm not going there. <laughs> you're not going to give you a gun. If you walk in there and say you have an LLC and you have not made any money, nor have you have you have any transaction, and there is no cash flow in your LLC, nobody is giving you a shot. Okay, we talked about that. And I again we started the introduction. Credit is the flexibility so that you can borrow and that you can repay over a term. And so this is when I start doing my metrics. And my metrics are going to be based on this right here, what we call the five C's of credit. And the most important one, number one, is cash flow. Number two, collateral. Yes, I want that land. You want to buy a house? Yes, I'm, I'm going to make sure that you can repay me and I want that house as collateral. And I want a first lien deed of trust on that house. Be simple. Means you own the house and the bank has a mortgage against it. I'm going to repeat that. Number one, cash flow. Number two, collateral. The other threes kind of fall into place. Character. How will you repay your credit score? Character. Conditions. What are the conditions? Are you in an upgrowing, uh, you know, the industry that you're in? You know, what's the market right now? Did you say you're looking at three years? <laughs> yes. Three years. Mm -hmm. the I mean, three years of positive cash flow. Well, positive cash flow tells me you are you have the ability <laughs> to repay. Yeah. yeah, if you lost money the last three years, yeah. then you're telling me, hey, I'm going to be profitable in the future. You're going to be able, you're going to have to really be able to substantiate that because I may deem you as a high risk. On the cash flow. Is that why some families give their kid a trust for their home? No, that's not. That's a whole different topic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But that may be generational wealth building. With this, she was talking about that earlier. Questions about the five C's? Again, number one, be cognizant of your ability to repay. So if you can repay, you have a low credit score, you need to talk to the lender and say, yes, these are the circumstances of my situation. I may have had some bad credit. It's improving, but my cash flow is pretty good, and this is why I feel I can repay. And also my collateral position is pretty good as well too. So I think that we are in a pretty good situation, and I realize the credit score is not where it needs to be. But if you look at the top two, cash flow and the collateral, I feel like this situation may work for me as far as a repayment. Yes, I have a question in regards to character. So do you, I guess you say the major banking institution taking consideration an individual that may have gone through a layoff from a job? And of course, you know, that can cause domino effect in regards to uh, your credit. So does the major bank institution, when you're going in to apply, you know, for a home loan, do they take in consideration things of that sort? They do, but you got to keep in mind, they're going to weigh it as well too. We always say we want a balance of the five C's of credit, but again, the first two are going to give the highest priority. 
your cash flow, the collateral. Correct. I may have to come back to your question and answer it a little bit more too as well. Okay, go ahead. So uh, it, understand um, cash flow and collateral, but it almost seems, and maybe you're going to get to it, conditions are important, I would think, now because it seems like we're in a kind of credit tightening mm -hmm. cycle. How does that affect like right now, Fed's raising interest rates. We seems like we're, we're, we're tightening credit, right? It now. is credit is tightening because, um, whether it's private equity or anybody that's lending money, given the market conditions right now, you want to be certain that when you do loan money to certain people, certain businesses, yes, that you want to make sure that you put your capital out there to people that's going to be, that's going to repay you. So again, back to the, the character. Character is not going to repay a loan. And you know, that, that's one of the first things that a lender wants to know. Am I going to get repaid? If, if I have questions about that, then you're probability of getting a loan is going to be low. If the repayment is pretty high, then the probability of you getting a loan is going to be very, very favorable. Not only that, too, it affects the rate, interest rate, that you're charged as well, too. The stronger the repayment, the better the interest rate. If you have questions about the repayment, that means you may be a little bit more risky. And we talked about that going to a third party or somebody. Sometimes banks you know, borrowing from a bank is a little bit cheaper than borrowing from a loan shark, predatory lenders, you know, subprime lending, you know, whoever. But, you, okay, payday. well, but, payday loans or whatever. So, well, they, but, but look, y'all, we, we, look, some, some of this, some of this is, 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 is simple. Because you wouldn't lend money to somebody that you know doesn't have a job. You, if, if one of your friends came to you and said, let me borrow $100, and you know they have a history of unemployment, or you know they have a history of not either paying other people that you know or doing other things that are not really correct with money, you wouldn't give them money. No, no, consider this. For for the most part, this is what I learned in business. This is what I learned in business. As a normal person, do you know anybody right now who you could go to that would give you ten thousand dollars? Could you call on the phone, right? You can pick up your phone and call ten. Say, I need ten thousand dollars. Now, the reason why what's going to happen is that in your mind, you cannot. Nobody can circumvent this in your mind. You're going to first of all think about the people that have it. Then you're going to think about the people that will give it to you, okay? Then you're going to think about the people that won't scrutinize whether the fact you're going to, they're going to question whether you're going to give it back. And those three questions right there are going to determine who or if you call anybody. So that's, some of this stuff is really simple. What he's saying is really simple. It's examining but what a credit record is, is it's on paper. It's, hey, you didn't pay Tommy back. Why would I why would I lend you money? You 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 said you needed money for gas. You didn't pay Tommy back, but you got a new pair of Jordans. It's the same thing. We do this every day. Hey, so um, a couple more questions, then we want to make sure that we get through this information. There'll be there'll be time at the very end for QA. Okay? All right. So let's kind of keep going. Okay. Hold your questions to the very end. Remind us for borrowing. Keep in mind this, that what the lender is really trying to do is trying to evaluate you if you're a good risk. That's the key what we do. Let me just go back here just, just very quickly, guys. I started this presentation just talking about uh, getting flexibility. That That's what credit really does. It gives you flexibility to borrow money, uh, maybe finance a long-term asset over time, and you agree you know, to borrow money, and then you're going to repay it later. The average cost of a house in Texas right now is 342000 The na The national average is right at 400000 The average loan for a commercial, just a, I'm sorry, for a residential mortgage right now, it's a little bit less than 7%, 69 Ten years ago, 
the average cost of a house was one hundred and seventy three thousand. Five years ago, the average interest rate was three point seven percent or three percent. So right now, you know, if you look at it versus five years ago, interest rates are up almost three hundred three hundred and fifty basis points. So what does that mean? If you purchase a house right now, three hundred and forty two thousand, the average interest rate six point nine four, your loan payment is two thousand two hundred and about sixty dollars. If you purchased a home five years ago, that same home, three hundred and forty two thousand, and you had the interest rate was three percent, three point three one, that payment on that was fifteen hundred dollars. It's a seven hundred dollar difference. We started this conversation just talking about credit, and then we got into bad credit. If your credit is bad, you're not borrowing at those low interest rates. They're going to deem you as higher, in, higher risk, and so your interest rate is going to be a little bit higher. So it's going to affect how much you can borrow. It's going to affect your repayment. So when I teach financial literacy, what I'm trying to teach you again is Live within your means, have a budget so that you can borrow at a low interest rate, which is key for me. It's also key when I teach my kids that as well, too. With that said, I'm going to just go ahead and close out and um, start with any. There'll be questions, time for QA, but first, let's give some love yeah. and some energy. Thank you, man. <laughs> so so here's what we're going to do this is not over so we're going to stay online to around 12 o'clock but here's what i want i want you to do for the people who are here and even if you're online i want you to look at the questionnaire or the survey that i have here and definitely i would like you to complete all of it before you leave but right now take a moment and look at the first question so the first question says let me read it real quick it says what was the most valuable thing that you learned from the cash from the credit management workshop and what action will you take from attending this workshop? So what was the most valuable thing you got from it and what action will you take? I want you to take a moment, write that down. We're going to open this up for Q&A. You can also share some of your actions, but I'll tell you that when you look at the average cost of a home, of things that you're looking at purchasing, you look at interest rates right now, compare them to five and 10 years ago, things are not getting cheaper. So right now you should have a wealth strategy plan <laughs> that is gonna require you to up your game. And if you don't specifically have one, if you haven't started out this year saying that number one, you wanna increase your income, you wanna reduce your debt, if you don't have something that is specific and measurable about how you're going to be in a better financial situation a year from now, then you need to start putting that down. And then start identifying the activities, the relationships, the people, and what you need to do with your time, and come to the realization that you've got to be a different person to achieve that goal. So the goals that you have will ultimately require you to be, become someone different than what you are today. That's what the Empower Series is all about. We want to give you hope, inspiration, education, and connection to resources to help you be a better version of yourself where you can achieve the goals that are important to you, that are important to the people around you, that when you look at people who are watching you right now that are inspired by you, that they will be inspired. They will want to do the things that you're doing. So I want to thank you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for showing up on time for your success and <laughs> being here on a Saturday morning. Thank you for watching us online. I know you didn't have a lot of questions, but definitely connect with us. The Empower Series, we're on social media. Uh, you have any questions, specific questions, definitely email me. I did get some notes about some things that you're looking for, so I'll definitely follow up with you with those notes to get you what you need. Um, but know that this is not the end. This is the beginning of a relationship. So uh, Trent, how do people get in touch with you if they want to follow up with you, what's the best way of doing that? Uh, you can give me a call at 214-678-8033 directly to me, my office, or you can contact me. The number again, do it slow. 214-678-8033, or you can call me at 
or the best well best way to contact me is just by email. It's just T Samson S A M P S O N at Comerica.com. This facility right here is a resource to the community. Clifton had talked about it. It's our business HQ. It's really I call this an incubator for you know, especially for aspiring business owners, students. They got a lot of students starting their own space. If you're a client of Comerica, go to Comerica.com. Look up Business HQ. Look at the criteria for being a member over here. Utilize the space because the space is for the community. It's a very nice space. You can use this for meetings, office, hoteling, you know, for your hoteling, for your office, for your work. Uh, take advantage of the space, and it's a good resource. What I like to be as well, too, I think Empowered, Empower Series is a great resource to the community, and I like to just be a part of that as well, too, a resource to you and just trying to help answer any of your questions with regard to banking. And again, for me, what I try to teach at the end of the day, I want you to borrow at the cheapest rate, and I, whatever I can do to help you do that, you know, is what my philosophy is, or I try to do. Those of you who are online missed, uh, Jason mentioned, um, who do we know right now that we can call that we can ask for $10,000, right? So first off, do you know anybody in your Rolodex <laughs> that you can call and ask that? Uh, number two, like, do they have it? And number two, will they give it to you? And what are the conditions? But the point is this, relationships are important. Um, relationships are more important sometimes, in, in my opinion, than money. Um, they give you access. Are you building trusting relationships with other people? Can people trust you? Can you add value to, in collaborating with, with someone else? I say that because one of, the, one of the things that Comerica does and why we have worked together for such a long time is that truly believe part of their core, their core value is building relationships with the people in the communities that they serve, whether they're individuals, whether they're business owners. So their first thing is let's build a relationship and get to know you. In that relationship, their other model is raising the expectation of what a bank can be. So first off, are you raising the expectations of yourself? Can you be a better value? So Comerica Bank focuses on building relationships. They ask us to raise the expectation of us as well as from them and what a bank can be. And lastly, what they really wanna do is they wanna help individuals and businesses succeed. Now, you can say that there's a lot of banks and a lot of corporations that are out there doing that, and there probably are. But in my experience with Comerica Bank, every individual that I've worked with from the teller, from the banker, from a relationship manager, from the people here at Business HQ, they have been about that. Building a relationship, helping you raise your expectation, and helping you succeed in whatever that might be. That's what we want to do. So with that being said, we're open up for questions, right? Yes. So what you got? And also be patient because I, I would like this mic to go to whoever's asking the question so that they can hear it online and then get the mic back if you want us to speak. So who has the, next, who has the first question? So I got three. One, two, three. As far as business credit goes, what credit, uh, credit reporting agencies does the bank uh, look at for your business credit report, not your personal credit report? Uh, Dun and Bradstreet, they'll look at at your trade references. But again, your business credit score, it's a metric. It's one of the things that it's kind of, we kind of view that somewhat as supplemental. Now, again, keep in mind what we're really looking for is your financials. And your fi when I say your fine, everybody kind of understand when I say when I'm looking at your financials, when I say the last two or three years, your financials, could be your last two or three years, your corporate tax return yeah, clarify. okay and your financials is your your fiscal year in to maybe 2021 balance sheet and income statement and so that's your financial a lot of people don't understand when they're in business the importance of having a profit account so when you come into the bank and ask these people to borrow their money and you don't have your financial records in order, it's almost an automatic that, That's a, that's a let different me, topic. Let me yes. speak to that a little bit. So, so what you're talking about is financial literacy. Mm -hmm. So next month, we're going to talk about financial literacy. Mm -hmm. And we're here the third Saturday of every month. But let me, So from a business perspective, we talk about financial statements. 
Financial literacy from a business perspective is understanding what a cash flow statement is, what an income statement is, what a change in financial position statement is, what a balance sheet is. If I've mentioned those things and you don't really understand what they are, then we need to have a conversation. We need to be talking, especially if you're in business. But on the personal side, it's the same thing, right? So what is your budget? Your budget is simply a, a cash flow statement on a personal side. What are your assets and liabilities? That's your balance sheet on a personal side. So when you're looking at borrowing money or getting a credit card or anything, bar anything, if you don't know your numbers, you don't know what your debt to income ratio is, then we need to have a conversation to increase your financial literacy. And that's some of the things that we're gonna talk about. So that's educational, but I'm gonna back up even further. Everything begins in the mind. So everything we do, every action we take is preceded by a thought, an idea, and then we go do something. So if you don't take the time to really sit back and say, whatever position I'm in is a result of the actions that I've taken over a long period of time. Why did I take those actions? What are my, what are my thoughts? What do I think about money? We talk about millionaire mindset, right? We're gonna talk about some of those things in April, but the point is financial literacy is critically important, which is what you're saying. And when you're asking someone to borrow money from a business perspective or a personal perspective, if you don't have your finances in order, where you can say, hey, this is how much money I've made, this is where it went, and this is how much money I have left over, I got the ability to pay back what I'm borrowing, then we need to have a conversation. So thank you for that question. It's a good one. Stay connected with the Empower Series. What's your question? And keep in mind, your financial statements and all of that, your records kind of drives the conversation as well, too. And it also not only drives it, it substantiates your ability to repay. And so it's very important for you to have good and accurate financial records. Yes, Jim? The uh, president just implemented a um, law rule that the <laughs> banks can no longer charge $35, $38 for an insufficient check. And now that's $8. So that's going to help a lot of people because mm -hmm. once you're back and in debt and your b checks are bouncing, that's just putting you in a bigger hole. Hmm? Well, I don't know if it's if it's taken its back yet. So yeah. I think it, it, it I don't know. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's it may be coming down the pipe. But let me just say this as well too. You know, I always teach a lot of kids they do not reconcile their checking accounts. It's important to reconcile. Checks used to take like two days, three three days. Now they can clear like <laughs> right at the end at the end of the business day. So it's always important for you to understand your financial situation. Clifton kind of mentioned this a little bit as well, too. So it's incumbent of you. You kind of know where you are. If you're writing these checks and expecting to get some float, I wouldn't do that because they're going to clear, and you could be charged those overdraft. That's like a fee. But what it is, the bank is saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and cover this, but I'm going to charge you a 35 Some of them charge $40. $40 speed, that can add up. So it's important for you to understand your situation and try to stay off that overdraft report because the bank also has the right to say, hey, you know what, we're not going to pay it, we're going to return it. And then you can get charged another fee to wherever you issued that check to. That was just a statement, but um, I had a question. As an experienced banker, a commercial banker, with knowledge right now, do you have an opinion on the prime if you feel the Fed's gonna give us another increase? Because I know my credit card debt is killing me. Okay. You know, just because of the prime keep going up. Okay. So do my, you feel yes. personally okay. that we hit the top or you think there might be a decrease? There's been talk about what they call a soft landing. So I think we may um, we may be at that threshold level, so we may be at the top. Keep in mind, when we say prime, Wall Street Journal prime, anybody know what prime is? The rate? Prime is 8.5%. That's reserved for your best lenders. And your, sometimes your best lenders are not even borrowing at prime. They're borrowing at prime plus a quarter. So that's 8.75, 8 and 3 quarters. Prime was 3 
and a quarter, probably in 2022. So um, less than 18 months ago, interest rates have gone up almost 600%. 500%. So, so what Prime means, too, is like banks make money off the spread. They make money off so, the spread. So, so their cost of borrowing money, they have to, when they give loans out, they have to give loans out at a rate that is above their cost. And what Trent is saying that their cost for the is like 8.5. So that's why interest rates are, are higher so that the banks can make money well our cost is probably you know we're bringing in money and we have to pay our depositors and so we bring in money and we have to pay for a money market checking account cds and right now those could be you know five percent four and three quarters whatever it is and so we make money off the differentiation what's called the spread but you got to keep in mind though a lot of traditional small businesses are not borrowing at prime they're borrowing at prime plus a, plus a spread because we have to factor that in, you know, just like any other business. So what other questions do you have? So questions, because we, we want to make sure people have more questions. And, that, and that's a very general answer as well, too, but it's kind of a little bit, you know, kind of getting the point as well, too. I hope that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I, am, I have an uh, accounting uh, study in the Reserve, uh, Federal Reserve Bank and know of other person who, uh, serve that for children here. Uh, Y'all uh, get money from a Federal Reserve Bank, the bank? Um, I think out of Federal Reserve, and again, this is just very general. For us, we get our money primarily from depositors, and the banks have to maintain a certain capital ratio, and that capital ratio varies. It could vary every day, but Typically, banks have to maintain a certain <coughs> capital ratio. So that means that our capital ratio has to be in line every day because if everybody comes in, you know, they look at various ratios that we have enough money to give them if they want some of their deposits yeah. back. And if we do not meet that capital ratio on a daily basis, we have to go borrow that money from, a, from the Fed. And that fluctuates on a daily, it goes daily. And so depending on how much money you have, and so they're managing that through their money desk every day. And capital ratio means really how much physical money that the bank has versus how much they've kind of lent out and, and what they have in depositors. So it's a, it's a capital ratio. Yeah, the capital ratio is like 10%, 12%, whatever that number is. They're gonna take another 30 or 40%, put that in investments, treasury bills and whatnot, and they're probably gonna take the other 60 or 50%, they're gonna lend that out in the community. So that's how banks, you know, that, 100% of deposits that we have, they're not loaning out 100% of the deposits. They're keeping 10% for just to meet that capital ratio. Then they're taking another 30% of that. They're making investments and they're taking the other 50 to 60% and they're making loans on that. And so that's why it's very, very important for us as we talk about to make good decisions. And that's why I have a fiduciary responsibility on a daily basis to evaluate credit look at people that can repay and the ones that cannot repay we have to say no so some feedback from you guys what are some of the things you wrote down that you're going to do you know the most valuable thing that you took away from today what action you're going to take and i want to give you the mic so you can see who's going to be first sherry oh so you're getting up <laughs> <laughs> so so for number one for the number one i said the question was what you said, what is the most valuable thing? So I put this, uh, the most valuable thing for me, and I already know this too, is the importance of being good stewards of money management. That's, that's, the, first step. that's the first step. And then the second, what am I going to do, is aggressively pay off my credit card debt. All right. So I think the good my still on. A good goal, a measurement smart goal is to say, what is my credit, what is my current level of debt today? And where do I want it to be in December? It's going to be less. So we'll support you at that, Queen. Thank you. So uh, I put, I need to be more consistent because I haven't ran the, um, 
the uh, credit, the free annual credit reports, uh, probably in a year. So I need to go back and look at that again, and I'll do that as an easy over the weekend thing to go pull down. So thank you, King. Give it up. So, so being consistent, consistency is a money maker right there. And also running, getting a free credit report, knowing where you stand, first step. Good. Any, anybody else wants to share? I basically stated that I wanted to work, be more intentional on my spending and work on um, aggressive uh, budgeting. So, being intentional on your spending and working on your budget. So give it up, Queen. There we go. You know what? I'm just going to make a comment on that. I think everybody, we should all work on our budgets. Everybody on a, you know, we, 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 you know, I always. You gotta, you took off your I'm sorry. I think we all should live within our means because for me, uh, as a, um, you know, as a banker, I'm going to be honest. I, when I'm out there, yes, I'm always negotiating to get the best credit. So my mortgage, I have the lowest interest rate. My, uh, my vehicle, I have the lowest interest rate. You know, so I'm always trying to avoid debt. And for me, it starts with understanding your budget, your personal finances. And so I, I think we should always be looking at that periodically, frequently. I was going to ask earlier, um, you said the budgeting and the debt, less debt. What if you have someone who doesn't have the seven what is the very good or excellent credit but they are out of debt they don't have any debt and they're trying what what would you do in that situation Okay, again, it's if you do not have any debt and your credit is medium, again, we talked about most lenders, they want a balance of the five C's. And you, keep in mind, I tell you that balance starts off with number one, cash flow. Can you repay? That's fine, but I'm looking at, can you show me, can you repay? So I'm looking at that, and then I'm looking at collateral. And then I'm coming back, and I'm looking at the conditions that you're talking about, the character. You don't have any debt. Your credit score is okay. That may be fine, because I can live with that, because I've evaluated your ability to repay. So we're looking for a balance of the five C's of credit. That's, that's great. That tells us that you've paid your debts in the past. That's a good indication. But still, it, it can be mentioned, but it doesn't mean that you, <laughs> because your ability to repay is based on your cash flow situation and can you repay according to terms. So if you don't have a job, you don't have income coming in, you don't have cash, cash flow that we can substantiate, then the question becomes how we're going to get repaid. So we're going to start from the basics first and then work our way down. So before I say goodbye to the online audience, we're going to keep going, but I got to say goodbye to the online audience after I share this. So I help a lot of people and we all have family members, young kids or young adults that, you know, for some reason can't get that, you know, we're, I'm not their emergency fund, right? <laughs> or, or they've got to live within their means. So, so I find that the advice I'm giving people always have to take a step back and think, Am I really applying that? So am I being consistent with the basics? You know, am I in a situation where I am budgeting my cash flow as meaningfully as I, I should and money is not slipping through the cracks? So I have a nephew that I'm helping use some financial, per, personal financial software like Quicken. And so as I'm updating him on how to use it, I'm going back and saying, okay, I need to be using this tighter, be more consistent you know, every month before the month starts, making sure that my budget is, play, is laid out and that as I'm, as I'm going through, I'm tracking to see how I'm spending towards my budget 
then I'm looking back at the end of the month to see how well I did. So I would tell you the three steps of really budgeting is not just having a plan, but it's also having a system where you can track your actual spending to your plan and then spending some time to look back at it and say, how well did I do? Did I overspend in this category? Did I underspend? Am I, am I paying off my debt? Am I saving money to my savings account, my emergency fund? Am I saving money to my retirement? So all of those things is, is like work. And so I would encourage us all to be in the same boat. Let's step up our game, raise the expectation, practice sound money management principles. And by you doing that over the next six months, 45 months, or, or six months or nine months, you will increase your credit score, right? You will increase your credit score. The learning does not stop here. Stay connected with us. Again, email me at thrive at empowerseries.com if you have more questions. You're on our YouTube channel, so don't keep this to yourself. Share it with other people. We're on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, definitely stay engaged with us. For those of you who are here, this is not ending. We still got some food outside and we got some to-go boxes, but uh, continue to ask questions, stay, stay connected. And I wanna thank you again for tuning in. And until we meet again, be empowered and inspired to thrive. Thank you. So we're offline. <laughs>